So now we're going to have a look at other parasites. Now other parasites are very rarely seen in fish, but I'll cover the four most common ones. So first of all, you've got parasitic copepods, and these look exactly like normal copepods in a tank, but they move around on the surface of the fish. They're extremely rarely seen in, in home systems, and the only times I've ever seen cases have been coming in on Moorish idols. The good news is that parasitic copepods are very easy to eliminate. Either a small copper dose or most other medications is enough to knock them off or kill them, or a freshwater dip will usually cure them in one hit. Occasionally it becomes necessary to do a second freshwater dip, but it's very rare to do so. And when I say a freshwater dip, I wouldn't dip them in pure RO. What I do is I take a litre of tank water to five litres of RO, warm it up to temperature to match the same tank, pop the fish in there and leave them around three minutes. If at any point you see the fish go onto its side or lay on the bottom of the barrel, take it out and return to the tank immediately or the quarantine system. But if you do it at this low salinity rather than pure RO, you're not unlikely to see that happen. If you do this in a clear container, a clean, clear container, you will actually see the copepods fall off the fish and die on the bottom of the bucket. Then simply net the fish out and put it back. Another disease which you see very, very rarely, and again, frequently only on more idols, would be parasitic flatworms. Again, those familiar with flatworms will know what they're looking for here. And they look like tiny slivers of oval-shaped tracing paper on the surface of the fish. These are going to be anything from a few millimetres long to an inch or more. Again, a freshwater dip at low salinity there will take those clean off and problem solve very, very quickly. So it's a nice, easy one to knock out. Another one you see quite often on wild fish that are coming in, particularly butterflies, would be anchor worms. And these long thread-like worms hang off the side of the fish. The good news is, again, they're very easy to eliminate. One dose of copper is often enough to take them all out. And even things like cleaner ass and cleaner shrimps will eagerly pick them off and clean them all off, whereas they won't, cleaner ass and cleaner shrimps won't touch white spot brocanella, velvet or most flukes. Rank ones are very distinctive and very easily eliminated. Uh, that covers most of the other parasites you see. There is one other which I've only seen once or twice, which is uh, one where the parasite, a parasitic isopod, which looks a bit like a woodlap, since in, indeed they're part of the same general group, and it eats the tongue of the fish and replaces the tongue with the isopod. So when the fish's mouth is open, it has a large woodlouse holding onto the stump of its tongue. But this actually does no real harm to the fish. The fish may lose a little bit of body weight compared to normal weight gain for that species. But it won't do any harm to the fish. The fish can function either without the isopod or with the isopod working as a tongue. And it can be quite a novel thing to have. You usually only see this on large predatory fish, such as lionfish or groupers. I've only ever seen a couple of cases out of many tens of thousands of fish, so it's pretty rarely encountered. There's one other one I'll just quickly mention, which is black spot. Again, this is extremely rare. I've only seen a couple of confirmed space cases in my 30 odd years in the hobby. This is a small burrowing worm which leaves black marks on the surface of the fish and this is where the worms are tunneling through the body. Some sources do say that you can eliminate it with certain meds, but in my experience often by the time you've diagnosed it, researched it and done something about it, it's often too late. Fortunately this is an incredibly rare disease, so it's not something that normally you'd have to worry too much about. However, it is often confused with hypermelanization in clownfish. Um, where this happens is where a clownfish is hosting in a coral instead of an anemone. The coral can sting the clownfish and remove scales. Clownfish's skin is black underneath and this will cause permanent black spots to appear on the fish. And these are simply missing scales. They generally don't grow back. Occasionally do, but generally don't. They won't do any real harm to the fish long time. They'll just they have lots of black speckles. Make sure you check out our other videos on quarantining fish and diagnosing fish diseases.